So I'm going to be upgrading my PC. This is what it looks like now. It's nice, it works, it's perfectly fine, but I've never really had a permanent cooler, one that I'm really satisfied with. This one's good. It would be really good for an i5 or an i3 processor. I have an i7 that runs really hot, so I need a cooler that's a little bit better. I want to be able to overclock it, even a little bit, and this one just doesn't allow me to do that, even though it's a great budget cooler. So in this video, we're going to be replacing the cooler with the Deepcool 360EX Castle, this monster right here. So obviously, as you can see, it has a 360 millimeter radiator, three fans, 120 20 millimeters each uh, and a nice pump good looking pump i think this is one of the best looking pumps out there for a, an aio cooler probably the best we'll see how it looks like after the installation so let's look at what's in the box and then we'll move on to the installation tutorial oh yeah quick note so last video we broke 20 likes easily that was the goal for the video this video let's try to break 40 why not I think we could do it. 40 likes is the goal. So inside of the box, we get three 120mm fans with the Deepcool GamerStorm branding. These fans look and feel great quality all around. You get all the necessary brackets, screws, nuts, and they're labeled as well, which is a very nice and helpful touch. Of course, you get the manual, which I'll get into in a little bit, the massive 360mm radiator, and the pump which is also pretty big. Oh yeah, and the glorious GameStorm badge. It's one of my favorite things. We'll be sticking that onto the PC later. So installation, uh, once again, I have an i7-7700K, so the socket type will be LGA-1151. Installation is very simple as long as you know where you're gonna mount the radiator. I got the easiest thing out of the way, mounting the fans to the radiator first, straight to the point. All you need is those long screws that come included. After that, I placed the radiator where I wanted to mount it, made sure there were no cables in the way or stuck, and then and screw in the radiator to the case. And now we have to pay a bit of attention to detail, but it's also pretty simple. So the manual tells you what holes correspond to each socket on the main bracket. Now if you're using AMD or a different Intel socket, this will be a little bit different, but if you're using 1151, it should be the same as I'm doing. If you're unsure what way the mounts are supposed to face, you'll find out in the next step. So here, we're going to place the little plastic covers to cover the screws and keep them from moving. If the plastic doesn't go in correctly, it means you're facing the bracket the wrong way. Simply remove the screws and put them in the other way around. After this, the plastic should go in and the screws shouldn't move. Now you can place the bracket through the back of your motherboard. It should go in nicely if you're using the correct holes for your socket type. Then you have to mount the smaller brackets onto your pump using the tiny screws. That's pretty straightforward. After that, you can place the pump over your processor slowly and steady and secure the pump with the nuts. I recommend that you have the case on its side for this. I had mine upright and I struggled. If you have it on its side, it should be much easier. So now that it's installed, let's power it on for the first time. And of course, you can't forget the GamerStorm badge. Okay, here we go. Booting for the first time. No graphics card yet because in case it leaks or, you know, just random emergency, uh, there's no damage. Here we go. That looks nice. Oh, that looks good. Oh, wow. Hang on, there's just one thing left to do. There we go. No fingerprints. Brand new. Wow, that's the best looking cooler. The best looking pump. That's nice. Well done, Deep Cool. So, mounting options depend on your case. I have the Gamdius Apollo M2. So, the 360 millimeter radiator fit perfectly uh, in the front here. Three fans at the bottom. I had to scoot the cables a little bit because I had a bunch right there. But so far, no interference with the cables. Radiator is nice and tucked in there. And this shot right here, just, I mean, wow. <laughs> if you're considering getting this thing, I mean, I know this isn't the full review and stuff, but I mean, just go and get it. Just look at that. Now, I'll have a full review of this cooler very soon, but so far, it has to be one of the best looking pumps out there. Probably the best. I do want to say, though, installation was super easy. This manual was really good, especially compared to ones I've checked out previously. I got all the necessary screws and brackets included. There was no issue there. Seeing this pump in person is just on a different level. You see it in pictures and stuff, but you have to see it in person. And also, I played a little bit of GTA just to see what my temperatures were going to be like. I'll save the rest for the full review because I haven't really tested it too much, but with a normal cooler playing GTA 1440p high settings I get around 65 degrees maybe even 70 depending on where I am on the map and this cooler didn't go above 60 59 was the max 
on an i7-7700K that runs pretty hot. Same settings and everything, I mean, that gives you an idea of what the review is going to be like. So far, really good. Alright, that's going to conclude this video. Stay tuned for the next upgrade video we're going to make on this computer. I'm going to be replacing the power supply with a new modular one. Cable management is atrocious at the moment, and something has to be done. So, that's going to come very soon. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.